Hello. So over the last little while I've had quite a few questions around how to work out the minimum focusing distance of a lens and in all honesty does a lens have one? So a common problem people might have I've noticed usually with macro photography because you do need to get quite close to your subject. Um, people will try and focus on a subject and they just listen to their camera range the whole time so it makes a little that noise. <laughs> um, that's really annoying. Often you get it when you have autofocus on as well if you're doing bird photography and you get twigs and sticks uh, in front of the subject that you're trying to focus on. Um, so I'm pretty sure we've all heard that noise. How do you work out what the minimum focusing distance is of your lens, which is how close you can get to your subject to get that macro image? It is complicated and there's a big mathematical equation which I'm going to post in the comments for those people who would prefer that. But I'm a bit of a doer when it comes to that kind of thing. So today I'm going to show you how I work it out in the field real time. So the first lens I'm going to use today is kind of an entry level um, macro lens. It's just the 50mm which is a prime lens. Um, it's a $150 lens that you can get from you know TEDs or, or wherever or online. Um, and you can get them second hand as well. Uh, I liked it because it was the entry level one-to-one -one, which is what a true macro is one-to-one -one. in terms of your subject that you're focusing is going to imprint onto the sensor the same size that it is in real life so with this lens I of course when I first bought it wanted to get right in close and just thought oh, I can just take a photo really really close um, it won't focus that close each lens not the camera but each lens will have its own minimum focusing distance um, to find that out, with the 50mm for example, um, I have two settings on the side. I have my autofocus and my manual focus. I'm going to leave this in autofocus for this particular exercise because I know this lens quite well. So what you would do to find that out, lens cap off, I always forget to do that. So I've got a little specimen here. Um, I make these and pin these to use as specimens in my macro classes. Um, one of the things I think we get excited about as we go into the field and we see a subject and we're like, oh, we just want to photograph it. Um, but that's fine, but we all know these guys will just fly away um, and they don't really have time to sit around and wait for us to focus. So if you know what it feels like, like physically feels like to be that distance away from your subject, you'll get your photos a lot quicker and hopefully before your subject flies away. So I've got my autofocus on, I've chosen the settings that I want to um, shoot at. They don't really matter all that much um, because your lens is what's going to be focusing. So with this particular lens I would start close and you would put you know how you half press your shutter so that it can get the focus before you take your photo half compress your shutter and it will probably range and then you move back a little bit do it again it might range again do it again and then you'll see something come into focus that point and mathematically it's you know I don't know 15.3725 centimeters or whatever it is um, that is your minimum focusing distance what I would recommend is that you get used to what that feels like because when you're out in the field um, you don't probably care what that means um, but you will remember and your muscle memory will remember how far you need to be away from your subject and we all know that once you get behind the camera things look you know different distances and things like that so get a feel literally for what that feels like and then take your photo so that's just an overview of what I would do with my 50 mil the other thing that gets in the way sometimes of figuring out what our minimum focusing distances are uh, if you use things like extension tubes and bellows um, I have some of those here so when the equation is figured out as to what the minimum focusing distance is on your camera or your lens the calculation will actually be from the camera's sensor to the subject so if you do google online the exact minimum focusing distance for your lens which you can do on most lenses um, it might say you know 15 centimeters when you're working that out don't put your ruler at the end of your camera and then 15 centimeters to your subject because that won't be correct it's actually from the sensor so for example 
It doesn't matter too much with the 50 mil, but if I had my 100 mil on, that's quite a bit different. <laughs> you know, 15 centimeters, that's the whole distance of your lens. And this lens certainly doesn't start focusing right at the end. So just keep that in mind when you're figuring that out. So in relation to extension tubes, what they do is they fit between the camera body itself and your lens, that way around. Um, and you can put as many or as little on as you want based on what you would like to do with your photos and how you want to photograph them. When you add this on, the calculation that you might have found online will no longer be relevant. So there is a calculation, again, I'll put it in the comments, um, how to work this out, but I just sort of try and do it using those principles that I worked on before. If you do find though that when you do this with using extension tubes, that nothing's in focus or it, it's sort of focusing right at the end, based on the type of uh, lens that you're using and the distance that you're choosing to put on to the end of that lens, um, your minimum focusing distance at times can end up in the middle of your lens. Um, be mindful of that. When you get down into the very nitty gritty kind of ends of macro, that can happen. Um, but again, trial and error, have a play. So these are actually really cool to have just at home. These aren't very expensive. I think I got these um, online, oh, maybe $20. Um, the cheaper ones don't have the digital connection between your camera and the ends of, end of your lens. So you'll lose your um, auto-focusing and sort of any um, digital connection. So for example, if I pull these apart, if this was your lens, it would click onto your camera. These bits would talk to your camera. Um, these don't really do that very, very well, um, the cheaper you go, um, but the principles are still the same and work just the same. So we've talked about uh, how to get our focusing distance with our 50 mil. So now let's move on to our 100 mil. Okay, our 100 mil lens. So the 100 mil is a little bit different to the 50 in that it has auto manual focus as well, but it also has a focusing distance kind of um, sits on the side here. And any lens that has a long range, so your telephoto lenses, um, they will also have these as well, depending on the brand and you know how professional that lens is. And what it means is that when you're in autofocus, um, the camera has from the minimum focusing distance right the way to infinity to focus on and it doesn't know kind of where where you're necessarily focusing and that can take a long time as well so you don't want to go up to an insect or something like that and end up you know sitting there for five minutes while your camera ranges to figure out what it is you're trying to focus on and then the insect flies away um, there is a what it means is that you're telling your camera only to range within that specific area of measurement. So you're going to save yourself time instead of ranging all the way to infinity and all the way back. If you tell your camera, I'm not actually shooting a long distance item uh, or subject, I'm only focusing on subjects that are closest to my camera, so only range within that little little area. So for if you move that marker, it's now going to focus the full full range of everything. The macro has a minimum setting, kind of a middle setting I guess, um, which is sort of half a meter and then you've got obviously closer than a meter as well. This is the one that I use the most often when I'm close to my subjects but sometimes if I move further away it'll start ranging, acting a little bit funny and I know that I'm outside of the range that I've told my camera to focus in. That's really handy to know because sometimes and I've done it myself, I've picked up my camera, it's on 0.5 and I'm trying to shoot, you know, something that's a long way away. And I'm like, why isn't my camera focusing? Well, you have manually limited the range in which it's going to focus on your behalf. So keep that in mind as well. So once you've figured out your minimum focusing distance, um, keep that in mind. So the minimum focusing distance for this camera, for my macro photography in mind, I would move this to the closest setting and then do the same process that I did before. Starting close, compress your shutter halfway till it focuses and move back until it's actually in focus and you'll go, okay, that's my minimum focusing distance. The other way to do it, which 
I like as well <laughs> uh, with the 100 mil is to move it to manual focus so switch to manual focus so that's cancelling out all of your options up here you're not telling it to focus on anything this this is not going to move unless you move it so I move to manual focus and then I move my um, focusing ring down to one-to-one -to -one, which is the um, closest magnification that this particular lens can do and then I'll start and this way I do it the opposite I start far and I move closer and closer and closer and closer until it starts to focus and then I know where my focus um, point is So this next lens is my baby, it's my absolute favourite. It is an MPE 65. Um, I first got the lens and I hated it. I was like, what have I done? I don't, like I just couldn't figure it out. I would not be able to use this lens to photograph that butterfly. I would probably get, you know, a portion of the butterfly. This would be able to focus on the scales of the butterfly wings. So with this lens, um, again, finding the minimum focusing distance, um, it's already manual. I move it back, it is a five times um, magnification. So yeah, that's my MP65. This next lens is my Lauer 15 millimeter tilt. Um, it is a very, very, very wide angle lens. Um, again, completely manual, a very fun lens to use. That's also why I love and hate this lens. So this lens is very tricky. Um, this is a really good example of a very drastic change from these lenses on the minimum focusing distance, which is with this lens, the minimum focusing distance, I'm not even joking, is here, um, to the point where you can book like whoop, your subjects um, on the lens here and I've done that before and behind the camera it looks like you're quite uh, a distance away um, because it being a wide, wide angle um, but then you you know you're zooming in zooming in zooming in zooming in yep 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 like oh yes it's in focus and you go oh holy crap I'm like right on top of my subject, but it won't feel like that behind the lens. So this is a really good example as to why get out in your backyard, you know, even pick up a, a piece of grass or something like that, hold it, get closer and closer to your lens or further and further away and get used to what that distance feels like with your lens. Um, if I've been shooting with this MP65 for a while, um, and then I put my 100 mil on, guaranteed, I will go in really, really close and then go, oh, 100 mil, and I'll move back. Um, or with this one, I never go in close enough, so I've got to, like, closer, closer, closer. Um, so, yeah, so they are some interesting um, ways of working out the minimum focusing distance on your lens and some of the ways that you may find yourself in a pickle and go, oh, I don't know what to do. So... Go back to basics, turn your lens to manual. Um, if it's a zoom lens, dial your lens right the way back to um, its, its closest distance, almost one-to-one, -one, whatever it is on these lenses, um, and then slowly approach your subject and work out what that distance is for you. The other thing, if that's still not working, check your lens out. See if it has any of these um, um, settings on the side maybe you've just accidentally got the wrong setting um, I still do that sometimes so don't don't stress out um, but I guess with photography the quicker you get at picking up on these things doesn't mean you won't make a mistake but you won't shoot with the mistake you'll go oh it's not doing what I want it to do oh hang on I know what to do and then you'll be able to troubleshoot that stuff really quickly and anything to do with nature you've got to be quick you don't get the a second chance sometimes um, yeah, 
So I hope that's been helpful. Um, I'll put the mathematical calculations below in the comments. And if you have any other topics that you'd like me to cover, um, specific topics, um, please put them in the comments or reach out to me and um, yeah, I'll see what I can do.